नमस्ते गौरव नमस्ते 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 सुमंतो आई थिंक यू कैन पुट योर वीडियो ऑन ओ ही सडनली लॉक्ड ऑफ वेल डर मैटर ही ही लॉक बैक इन एंड वेलकम फ्रेंड्स आई कैन सी अ लॉट ऑफ फ्रेंड्स आर ऑलरेडी हियर वेल क्वाइट अ फ्यू एक्चुअली सो आई एम ग्लैड पीपल हे ज्योति हाउ आर यू डूइंग गुड टू गुड टू सी यू अगेन uh friends this webinar is special i hope there are no internet glitches and you'd be able to enjoy this entire journey with sumanto ghosh which is to do with <clears throat> uh jim corbett's stories and his experiences in this landscape uh with tigers and um, elephants and uh, lots of riparian ecology experiences that he'll be talking about so you really enjoy yourself and um uh, venkatesh ji welcome james welcome um i know that um, uh, sumanth is really looking forward to your presence here james so so most welcome we met many many years ago at tiger camp and um, you you'd given me um you know a little note as well so that was really nice so jared uh, upamanyu shivang Brian, 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 uh, welcome, Brian. Good to see you. Uh, welcome, Mira, Boris. Welcome, friends. So it's it's fantastic that the numbers are increasing. Um, Sumanto, are you back? Sumanto, if you're back, can you put your video on? I think people will want to see you, Sumanto. And um, Welcome to our uh, webinars, friends. So uh, uh, this webinar is about uh, Jim Corbett's stories, and uh, <clears throat> this is uh, part of a conservation drive where we want to bring more value to people. I'll quickly introduce myself, and then I'll have my colleague uh, Gaurav introduce himself as well, and then uh, Sumanta will start with his presentation. my name is mohit agarwal and i am an experiential ecotourism specialist i am the founder of asian adventures which is a um, 29 year old um, travel outfit uh, specializing in conservation travel this company is on a large mission to save elephants and its corridors free the himalayas of plastic waste and also to keep the originality of ancient temples up in the himalayas alive i am i um i am i'm vice chair on asian ecotourism board and i on the mission to to take uh, the work forward of those people who are deeply connected with ecotourism and conservation so that's a bit about me over to you gaurav can you just introduce yourself and then uh, hi good evening everyone my name is gaurav nalkor uh i'm an avid bird watcher i'm a passionate wildlifer and uh, i have a deep love for nature i'm also a big believer in the fact that wildlife tourism and ecotourism when done right uh, can be very beneficial towards conservation and awareness uh, i'm training to be an ecotourism specialist professionally uh, but educationally i am a wildlife researcher i'm qualified as a wildlife researcher Uh, and i've been lucky to be working with mohit and uh, asian adventures for the past few years uh, both of whom uh, you know uh, share the same dream as me of using wildlife tourism as an awareness tool thank you okay thank you so friends um before uh, sumanto gets on with his job i want to let you know that <clears throat> in case if there the internet glitch we will press the panic button and reboot the system but you don't go away because you'd be able to resume the webinar in a couple of minutes if that happens and uh, if that doesn't happen then then you'd be able to stay throughout if you've got questions you can put that in chat for sumanto to answer at the end of it over to you sumanto Sumanto are you there?
Gaurav, I think he's there, but he probably has connection issues. Can you just check? Yeah, I'll call him and just check. Yeah. Because I can see him logged in. Friends, uh, uh, give us give us a minute or two. We're just trying to get him back in. Okay, Samantha, can you speak up? Samantha, can you speak up? I know you're there, but... I think he's having some connection issues. Oh. Hmm. I should, um, I think, tell him to log off and then log back in. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> this is happening to a lot of people in these remote areas where we're trying to have them log in. As long as they're staying in the city, it's good. But the moment they are logging in from some remote area, um, it's just getting to be more difficult. Sorry, friends, just bear with us. Got any luck? To log out and log back in. Hmm. Okay. So it seems he's logged out. I'm just waiting for him to log back in now. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Let's let's go in. And if he if if he's got uh, issues on his um, computer, he can also log in from uh, his phone, and I can run the slideshow show for him. So just to give you a brief, this this um, uh, presentation from Sumanto uh, uh, is is a special one because um, he's been in this landscape for forty years, and you know this is his lifeline. This is what he thinks, breathes, does, eats everything, and and his entire life he has spent on. Um, Conservation, and he's he's been the president of Maser Conservancy. Um, he's spearheaded vulture conservation in his area, and he's um, he's got this beautiful lodge um, called Vanghat, <clears throat> which is a standalone place. And uh, you know he's been looking at uh, grassland management, and you know the elephant uh, movement, and uh, various other things that he's been doing it with the communities there. So, uh, you know, the kind of work that he's put in is is absolutely um, jaw-dropping. This is, you You were going to get a glimpse, you're going to get a glimpse of uh, what Corbett's stories are and how he's going to relate to his own experiences uh, as he goes along. And um, uh, I just hope that this webinar is not... Um, uh, full of glitches. I'm just asking you to wait a bit longer. And if there's a major problem, then it'll be a different story.
any uh, is, is he logging through his phone now um, yeah he said he log in through his phone okay if he's going to log in through his phone that will be better because then i can run the slide show for him yeah <clears throat> Thank you for your patience, friends. And I, um, I'm glad you you're staying on. Um, you know, uh, most people don't have so much patience, but I'm I'm happy that you're here. Let me know if there's um, there's something else that I should do. I don't want to press the panic button. I mean, I can. And uh, we'll all have to, the participants will have to stay and we'll all have to log back in. Um, yes, Ashish. Uh, Manoji, Ashish has been a good friend. I have worked with Ashish uh, about uh, 30 years ago. So, uh, welcome, Sumanto. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know what really happened. Don't worry about it. Oh, so let's... And go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell me when you want to the slide. Okay, great. Thank you, everyone, and uh, yeah, so apologies about this, and I hope now from it will be smooth. So yeah, so we can get started. Uh, and my name is Samantha Ghosh. I uh, I'm uh, I'm a naturalist based out of the Corbett landscape. Uh, I I run an eco lodge here uh, um, on the banks of the Ramganga River, and. Uh, few sort of conservation projects and internship projects and uh, and sort of things like that so just wish to take you you know the next some time that we have now you know on just the journey that started from the banks of this beautiful river and, uh, and just share all that with you uh, the next slide the next slide So, Manto, you want me to move ahead? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so can you hear me properly? Can you hear me well? Um, um, friends, if you can hear me well, 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 hear Carry on, Samantha, because we can hear you. So I think you should. Yeah, fantastic. So yeah, so you, I mean, on the screen there is a, is a, is an image of the of the Ramganga Valley, and you know, for those of you who have been there, you know, it's not an uncommon sight. It's uh, you know, in terms of as a as a grandeur of any landscape, this probably is one of the finest in the in the Himalayan foothills. You know, you can see a herd of elephants there going across the Ramganga River. And uh, this is a uh, you know it's early morning uh, early morning picture, yeah. We can go. About our landscape is is that you know the sense of history that we have, you know here and uh, 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 you know prior to the coming of the British. You know, we were here in the last about 300 years. So before that, it was the Maharaja of Amitiri who owned this area. You know, and I have sort of used the picture of a hunting, you know, of a of a uh, of a hunting expedition there. And as you can see, there are a herd of elephants. It was something called haka. The term was called shikar. For those of you who would. have been pushed by beaters and you can see those elephants there and you know and uh, and there would be sort of shooters on the other side and so this type of very large scale hunting was something that we had that we would sort of witness in this landscape uh, 100 years back yeah if we can just come to the next slide please 
Uh, yes. So other than this, uh, I would call it sort of, I think, mindless hunting that happened. There was also also logging that had begun here, you know. So when about uh, about uh, in a century and a half back, uh, what we had in our landscape was a hard timber called sal. It's called Surya Rupa. And uh, you can see uh, pictures from so extremely large scale uh, uh, so logging was happening. And when I talk about the Ramganga Valley, uh, going into old records, archives, you know, we had we had witnessed that you know that uh, the uh, most of our valleys in our landscape had uh, were used to transport which means that upstream areas, there would be a tree felling. It would be pushed down into the river and it would get floated downstream. And uh, it was a... Large, uh, large number of this art had, uh, had gone to... Uh, for your information, Sal is a hard tree and, you know, it's, uh, it's very robust and... Uh, of moisture or or exposure of uh, of sort of water, you know, it doesn't go bad. So it was it for that. Uh, so yes, yeah, so we had so we were witnessing large scale of uh, you know uh, a large amount of sort of hunting. Yeah, we can go to the next next slide. Uh, so, Manto, uh, Shivang is saying, keep the mic away to avoid the hits. Great. So, we can go over to the next slide, please. So the idea of uh, you know of having a having a national park or a nature reserve in in that era was quite unheard of you know and um, of course there were people who were who were uh, who were sort of mooting this entire uh, plan and an idea of having a sanctum center in 1907 Smithies and Stevens, you know, two two uh, two foresters had sort of, you know, they were uh, they had mooted, you know, they had come up with an idea of having a having a nature reserve. It took a while for sort of that to happen, and uh, they were they were very dedicated officers like F. W. Chan. So these were people who were, uh, you know, sort of in a in a time when hunting was in fashion, you know, and uh, so these were people had come up with the idea of having a nature reserve in our area. So am I still audible? Uh, go on. Yes, no problem. Go on. Able to see the slide now for some for some reason. And we can so move over to the next slide. Yeah. So yeah, so Corbett. You know, and so that's a picture of him. But just coming back to the history of, you know, what is the Ramganga Valley? So as early as, as 1907, as I mentioned that this was the idea was sort of mooted to have it. Uh, and in 327 square kilometers, way back in 1936, had come up as a, as the Haley's National Park that time. You know, the Sir Malcolm Haley was the and the governor of the United Provinces, and uh, you know, after a lot of I think persuasion to the government, this area was then you know a small area on the banks of the Ramganga Valley had been declared as a as India's one of Asia's first uh, that had sort of come up. Yeah, we can come to the next slide.
Right. So, you know, and uh, and then uh, and briefly, the park was known as the as the Ramganga National Park in 1952. And then eventually after. The Corbett National Park and, uh, you know, and which was the after the author, writer, hunter, uh, Jim Corbett. Of human wildlife conflict mitigation and had done wonderful books. Uh, in our, you know, about this, about this landscape. So these are some pictures. Yeah, they can come to the next slide. Uh, yeah. So coming to the uh, to the Ramganga Valley, you know. So th this is an account of of from a Jim Corbett. The, oh, so this is a chapter from there. It's called the Fish of My Dreams. And uh, for those of you who have read the and the uh, the manitas of Kumau and the fish of my dreams this is just a poem you know i've just sort of marked it you know and he he writes about it that you know he miles of its length through a beautifully wooded valley well uh, stocked with game and teeming with bird life i had the curiosity to count the various kinds of animals and birds seen in one day uh, and by the evening of that day my count monkeys meant and among 75 varieties including pea fowl and jungle fowl uh, pheasants black and it was you know it's a, it's a lovely account because you know there are any mentions of that you know as a as a fisherman was catching a fish that I had by no means of weighing the fish as pounds. The weight of the fish is immaterial for weights are soon forgotten, not so forgotten are the surroundings in which the water rests a little before cascading over rock and shingle to, uh, to draw breath in another pool more beautiful than the one just left. The flash of the game Water shedding it rises uh, uh, with, the, with the chirp of delight. A silver minnow held firmly in his in his vermilion bill. The belling of the samba and the and the clear tuneful call of the cheetal apprising the jungle folk that the tiger whose pug mark show wet on the sand. Very few minutes before we we uh, we cross the river. On the in out in search of his dinner, uh, these are things that as yet unspoiled by the hands of man, hand of man. You know, so the only account and this actually the spot that he speaks about is pretty much where we are based on the uh, on the Ramganga River, and it is still pretty much the same. You know, it's it has still been quite. Uh, you know, it's a it's a place because of, uh, you know, because of, I suppose, low low footfall of humans. Uh, it remains extremely pristine, and um, yeah. So you know, so it's a. Uh, I mean, I often tell people that to understand what the Ramganga Valley is, some of these accounts are still wonderful. I think brochure of not audible properly. I I think there were there were some people. Who were saying that you know it's echoing or something? Is it okay now? You can just um, drop it. Yeah, you you carry on, Samantha, because, because, uh, because uh, okay. the 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 connection is uh, ratted. We can't get any better. Get any better. Okay, okay, fine. So we can come to the next slide, please. Right. So then, just I'm uh, talking about the Ramganga Valley. It's an extremely rich. Uh, it's. Ex you know, we have, I mean, we, there are about 500 species of birds which are reported in this area. And uh, yeah, come to the next slide, please. Which makes it perhaps all of India. And, uh, and a mind boggling 50 species of birds of prey uh, are there in the river valley, you know, in the Ramganga River Valley, indicating a very rich uh, bird life. You know, I mean, and 50 species perhaps makes it one of the river valley in Asia. Yes, we can come to the next slide, please. 
Right, and even in terms of sort of uh, and vulture species here of the nine uh, vultures found in India, Indian and the and the Eurasian. For to see uh, scavengers like you know like all vultures, and of course we have had a massive decline in the in species like the uh, uh, you know the um, and the white backed the Indian white backed the the chips pangolinses. Yeah. Owls, you know, so you know, so about eighteen now eighty eighteen species of owls and large owls to owlets are here. You know, at the again the and the in here it's a, it's a brilliant spot for the round uh, for all species yeah keep come to right so you know so the and about you know the we have the great hornbill you know very as we call them, the woodpeckers. We have about 18 species, you know, including the largest, uh, you know, the we have the, the perhaps is the smallest of all woodpeckers. So just this vast spectrum shows, you know, it, it really talks about the, and the great forest that we are in, the great old forest that we are in. Right, we can come to the Right, so, and the, uh, and the crested kingfisher here, which is you know, which is again a, is a sort of uh, a, a showcase of our river valley, and again uh, in a lovely. You know, in a in a very healthy healthy shape, and uh, yeah, so we got another five species. Check here. Right, we can come to the next one, please. And the bambles of the Ramganga Valley, you know. So this is a picture I've got. This is, uh, you know, Frank Anu Marwa. He she shared this picture, and you know. So, of course, the the Ramganga Valley today. If you just iconic species, you know, the and the tiger. Uh, if you come to the next slide, please. Yeah. So you know. So we have. Uh, our landscape boasts of the highest tiger numbers anywhere, perhaps in the world. You know, with over 260 hemi tigers. I mean, this is the largest concentration of tigers anywhere, and and the finest habitat of the Bengal tiger uh, anywhere in the world today. And uh, it has a decent increase in tiger population in the last one decade. Everywhere, even where. Unprotected forest called the Ramdega Forest Division, you know, even that has the highest tiger density for any non-protected area. So our so that conservation success has happened here, you know, and it's uh, it is to be witnessed, you know, and you know, with with undergrowth. In spite of that, the tiger sightings are very good, and it's you know, and also along with that, you know, with sort of tiger numbers going up, the and the challenges get very big, you know. So, you know, so which I'll come to the next slide. How do you address this becomes very important for us to address. Uh, we happen to be the northwest extent of the Asian elephant. And uh, including, you know, from the, the Corbett landscape to the adjoining, adjoining Rajaji on the northwest. I mean, we have, you know, we have a few thousand elephants in our landscape and the, and the numbers are increasing. And in spite of the high numbers, the, the, the conflict that we have with elephants is, is quite sort of minimal for other landscapes. And uh, yes, it is again the, in the Ramganga Valley. So most of the pictures, as you can see, are from the grasslands, which are there in the Ramganga Valley. And if you look at the, for those of you who've been to the Dikala and the grassland or will be coming, you know, it's a massive 100 square kilometer of grasslands. And, uh, you know, I often use a term that, you know, especially when you come in in the spring months, it becomes, uh, you know, the it's like a larger than life sort of vistas where a giant like the elephant is dwarfed, you know, by this beautiful, you know, sort of landscape all around. 
and uh, so these are you know elephants as we know are 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 brilliant uh, indicators of uh, of of the ecosystem and of the forest and it yeah it's a it's a matter of great pride that we have from such a good population yeah yeah we can come to the next slide please and Uh, and the Eurasian otter in very good numbers here, and the uh, and the leopard population, other deer species like the hawk deer in this picture, the sambar and the spotted deer and the barton deer, and ungulates and you know other herbivores like like mountain goats. We have two species here, the and the goral and the you know and the serao antelope, which happens to be one of our uh, very shy and sort of least seen sort of big. And so it's a, and it's also a very healthy population. And I would want to sort of point out here that you know that we really owe this to the local population. I think it is one reserve of Asia, I suppose. You know, whether the things like hunting pressure and all that is very very less. So the so the local population is just not involved in any of that. So the high numbers are obviously. Please. Yes, and the you know and um, so if you take the Ram Ganga, you know, and if you if you look at you know for for I mean, culturally speaking, the river Ganges, and I often say that you know if, if there was the most wildlife rich, the most life rich river that drains into the Ganga, the Ganges, is the Ram Ganga. You know, and uh, this is a picture from the Round Glass Sustain. It was taken by a very dear friend called Dithiman Mukherjee. It's an underwater picture. It's a very candid picture as well. And you can see large. So we have over about 40 species of, of fish in the Ramganga River system. Uh, and in very good numbers, especially in the reserve. Yes, could we? This is a the video if you like. If you like, yeah, we can just run it for a few seconds if you want. This was a yeah. So this was a and a GoPro picture of the golden masi. These are young masi, you know. For uh, for I mean, those of you who are uh, you know who are um, anglers, you know you would know that this is a very iconic. It's a it's a cult fish for anglers, and it was has been glorified by anglers of the past, and you know and uh, and sort of uh, yeah. So it's it it happens to be a very iconic fish for anglers. It is also a great indicator of uh, of a riverine system of a Himalayan. Uh, we need to have the next slide. Next slide. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see uh, it? No, it's it hasn't hasn't come in yet. Um, um, it's it's got a masir, masir, patch and a turtle. Uh, tortoise, uh, yeah. Tortoise, yeah. Can you see it? Uh, no, the slide hasn't. No, the slide isn't there yet. Okay, one second. Let me just restart. Restart. Friends, can you see? Friends, can you see it? Yes. So that's that's loading now, right? You know, so the you know, and then other than the large number of fish species that are there, there are cetaceans, and uh, you know, there are uh, terrapins and turtles, and that's uh, and a calabas fish that you see there. Have been, or uh, you know, the the one that have been caught. 
about about 30 kilos, making it what between 60 and 70 pounds. And it's a, it's a great indicator, as I said, of this river. And it's also so it's a it's a great pride for us to be having having these species. You know, yeah. We can come to the next slide, please. And of course, the one that so these are species that make us extremely proud. So that the that's the mugger crocodile on the on the top right, and uh, the the other species that is there, which is in one of the largest um, crocodilians that we have, and uh, it's a uh, it is something that only is there in the Indian subcontinent. There are there are you know there are areas in Nepal. And in India, and the Ramganga has a very healthy. Going inside the Dikala zone, I mean, would recall, you know, them, them sort of basking on the sandbanks, and uh, yeah, so that is a very, very special, special reptile that we have in the. It's also very important that you know while we bask in all this, I mean, glory of the of today, yeah. You know the fact that this is the oldest sort of protected river valley in in Asia, as I mentioned, you know, and uh, and for ages, you know, since the the 1930s. It has given immense joy to those who have visited. It has been a source of livelihood for thousands who, who, have, who have sort of lived around, you know, or, or destruction, you know, that usually is what happens for development. So, you know, so there is a road that is now coming up, you know, from the, you know, from upstream. This is in the buffer area. This is upstream of the reserve. A place called Machula, and it's going to go off for the for about about forty kilometers, and it runs along the entire river, you know, and uh, you know, and you know, will pave a lot of I think trouble for the river, and it is very important that you know all of us on this have this you know we should really get conscious about this and raise awareness about the Ramganga River. Because if you just come to the next slide, please. <coughs> yeah, so these are just some pictures of the destruction that the, the river has caused. You can see the silt that is going into the river system. You know, I know, I mean, after, you know, for a, for a while, the areas where this siltation goes down, you know, that, that part of the river almost goes dead, you know, and this is what we are seeing in the upstream areas. And if you please come to the in the next slide. And I think it's very important for us to to I mean when we have, you know, for, for those of us who appreciate nature and are, you know, are in love with it, it is very important that you know we also have to understand the the threats to our ecosystem. And you know you've seen those and the glorious images from from this continues. It's a matter of time before all that sort of disappears. And uh, yeah, if you just come to the next slide, please. And the and habitat loss. I see mass tourism as a huge uh, problem. To ecology, you know, master respecting sort of a stakeholder that we you know, and it, it 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 creates pick on our roads and you know and a noise and you know also the goes into the river system. So it is very important that all of us find that you know that those of us who have been into nature and appreciate it. Come now, you know, it is very important that we all sort of get together on this, 
you know, that we start addressing. We don't, let's not treat all these conservation success in isolation. I think wherever we go, you know, be it in India, Africa, or Europe, or America, I mean, you know, we, we, we really have to get together on these issues that, you know, all these, these success of conservation, you know, will eventually all go bad if you're not, I mean, if you're not conscious of the fact that all this needs to be protected, and we are the ones who can sort of protect it. Yeah, if you, uh, please come to the next. Right. So, so this is a this is a possible I mean, solution. I put that you know that I think uh, sustainable tourism is perhaps the way out. You know, we can talk of endless issues which are there, but you know, I mean, the we have to also talk about you know what's the way out. And other than community uh, participation, you know, this whole thing about having to to be choosy about where you go. I mean. Where have to choose areas which are which are conscious about the influx of visitors which are conscious about the number of visitors that we have you know carrying capacity and all that are things that we need to start talking about you know it's very very important we have to address like a river well we could all be taking uh, pictures of the river in its glory in the park but if you're not aware of what's happening upstream you know Right, we can come to the next one. Yeah, so I also would want to thank, you know, Anu Marva, who's contributed, who's always very generous with their images, actually, and Alishit Gupta, and Christopher Mills, and, and Gerard David, and Don Grath Stain, and uh, who's again uh, very generous. So these people have contributed. I'm, I missed out on some others. And yeah, in the next one, please. Uh, yeah, so thank you so much, and apologies for all this, you know, the bad network, and I was a little, you know, I got a little off because I, I had to switch over to the mobile, but I think whatever you got, I hope you understood what I was trying to convey, you know, is that, uh, yes, we do uh, live on the banks of a heavenly landscape, but it is very important, and I, and I wanted to share with you that the threats that we all have, and in all of this, we are all sort of together, you know, we need to, I think, battle for thank you so much and uh, if you have any questions you can please put it and that was a that was wonderful and thank you for all of you for this there's been a, there has been a problem there Yes, I think it was that. Yeah, uh, probably the, uh, the connection was poor to do or something. Friends, if you've got questions, please put them in chat. And Samantha can answer them. And those, uh, I saw some people who registered are not here. And, and they will get the link will get link. Link. So link. Everyone will get the link, link, tomorrow, link tomorrow in 24, in 24 hours. hours. So there's a question so there's a, from Manoj Bhava. Bhava. Would you feel that we're doing enough to educate about this to our school going children and schools? You know that surely is the hope we have and it sort of educate them and also educate them in a in a way that is you know where they well, unfortunately it is the next generation that will really sort of bear the brunt so it's yeah, absolutely. It goes without saying that children are very, very important. You know, whether and also other than just academics and you know showing them how it is done in a boardroom. I would really request all of you out there. You know, it's it's important to to experience them the early morning chirping of birds to that pond. You know, how to give them. In wonderful experiences in the wild, but I think the binocular is yeah, 
so it's uh, so that's how so other than academics i suppose children need to these outdoors you know they need to get back and take a dip in these beautiful rivers and you know they need to inquisitive about what they're hearing keep asking questions and yes i mean that's the it is very very important absolutely mohit i think your mic is so mic is so is a had a question from Nazim and that's a it's a and thank you for painting such a beautiful vivid picture of the landscape question thank you Nazim for appreciating that of you know this all this was uh you know in spite of the bad uh, connection you know it's very important you know to and to get together you know we all need to sort of I mean, gang up there is a you know it's almost like a we we keep keep witnessing battles so there is a in a battle and a force that is out to destroy our wilderness on you know this and it's not just because these are places for a holiday i mean without these trees and these rivers we know we cannot live you know and look at the condition of some of the the rivers that we see now so it is for our own survival it is very important that we we sort of get together we need to support those those stand alone warriors or people and organizations you know who are doing something on ground and you know uh, who are doing something on ground zero you know please uh, please write about when you see sort of destruction of nature you know or or take pictures of that tree that has been chopped down or that hillside that has been blasted it is very uh, it's, uh, it's not going to be easy you know and uh, and it's all worth it <laughs> um there um, is one more question from manoj baba what, Baba. Is, the what is the state of man and of man animal conflict, conflict in the region, in the region. Yeah, hello, Manoj. Yeah, that's a very good, uh, good question. So, as you are aware, that Uttarakhand, you know, when you look at the landscape, all are. The entire landscape, all thirteen had had so presence of tiger. Those uh, tigers, which are. simple words those so conflict are also leopards and our districts like in chamoli have the highest human wildlife conflict incidents probably anywhere in the world you know and uh, yes so we do have the the whole human wildlife conflict element is very big and you know in that people like jim corbett and the blue champion they were all uh, champions in this you know they address the human wildlife conflict element and today i see that one as one of the biggest i mean threats to wildlife conservation you know and it needs to be it needs to be addressed it needs to be you know i mean if you have you go to any landscape and if the local population has been attacked by a tiger or you know because in most cases it's the it's a local population it is very bad with the uh, acceptance of people on these matters is perhaps one of the highest in the world you know today when i say you know when we have all this wildlife there is another people i hardly ever hear of hunting incidents and all of that you know so that obviously is very positive news but human wildlife conflict other than big cats and people being Oh, uh, even though we don't have it very high in our area, but adjoining areas do have. I mean, Rajaji, because of its a fragmented forest, the roads which are there, the irrigation canal, hydroelectricity, railway line—you name it. 
you know we have you know very badly fragmented the forest so there are elephant incidents there and of course i mean other animals that are you know which have to do with human wildlife conflict elements are also animals like like monkeys you know even birds so much of the of the agriculture in our area has you know it's totally disappeared in uttarakhand in the mountains there has been a decline of of 90% when it comes to uh, agriculture or animal husbandry and generating crops and all of that so yes we do face this a lot in our area and that needs to be addressed very aggressively you know yeah and it's a very unique case we i mean in most most places in the world the when you see an example of animals uh, destroying a landscape or ruining agriculture they have they have sort of migrated elsewhere so it's a very unique example and it's a it's a very you know so these are so we owe it to our people and so we, Uh, there's a question uh, there's from, from uh, Kinari, uh, but uh, destruction, destruction of wildlife, of wildlife is, as is as ancient as mankind. As mankind. In, the in, of of in the name of development, there's a lot of there's destruction. Lot of destruction. How, can How can we stop it? Can we stop? <laughs> Good question. Goes without saying. Goes without saying. I think we just have to stop destroying wildlife. Yeah, 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 we just have to stop destroying you know i mean when you look at the mountains and all that right i i mean i would often tell some of my friends that did we really need that 4 by 4 always you know i mean look at what is happening in ladakh look at how what's happening in in uttarakhand look at what's happening in the name of a uh, well a religion you know when you come to chardham there are massive six lane eight lane roads which are there you know important that we need to now step back a bit from what we need you know um, i think that is the only way that you know we can now i suppose move forward we cannot expect to have you know keep expect in a price is a price for all of this no definitely no definitely Um, um, hold on a second. Yeah, I have shared uh, two email addresses, and yes, yes, the, the one is one card at gmail dot com, and the second one is info at one card dot com. Yeah, please do drop in any messages or anything that you know you wish to know, and yeah, so just let's make this. I think River Valley. you know as glorious as it always was and let's keep doing something for it <laughs> thank you so much uh so uh, okay there's one question that's come in uh, what is the uh, insect is the and spider diversity like <laughs> the insect and sp spider uh, spider is good it's spiders scorpions and sort of what have you butterflies yes it is very good i think the and a good time to see all that is perhaps of uh, this month no spring onwards 
is a good time to see that. So yes, we do have, uh, you know, we do have a very, uh, you know, uh, example, the most common that we see here is a giant wood spider. So when you come into these salt forests, they are large, you know, spiders that are, you know, you can see there the, and the, the cobweb, you know, the, um, that across trees, I mean, you could have a tree across the road and here, and, you know, I have seen like small birds, like a, a white eye or something sometimes being stuck up in these, uh, uh, in these, um, you know, in the cobs. So, yeah, so it's a, it's a good place to see all that. Perhaps not as high as one would have in Northeast or something or in the Western Ghats, but yeah, but, uh, but nonetheless, it's very rich. Any other questions? Uh, so, uh, so if, if there are there no are other questions, questions, I think, I we, think can we can uh, end, uh, end today's raise event. event. Uh, so, uh, thank so thank you everyone for coming. For coming. Uh, thank you all uh, for, your you for your patience. Uh, sorry, uh, for, the sorry for the inconveniences uh, caused. Uh, cause. But I hope but you enjoyed, hope you the, enjoyed webinar. the webinar. Uh, uh, looking forward to have you on our next one. And if you have any more questions, questions or if you want to find out more about Vargat, you can always email Sumanto directly. And I'm sure he'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Bye.